In my role serving as the Delaware Riverkeeper, leader of the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, and founding member of a national coalition of organizations battling FERC-regulated pipelines known as VOICES, I have experienced firsthand the many ways that the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has abused its authority and the law in order to advance fracked gas infrastructure. The Natural Gas Act clearly needs to be reformed in order to prevent further FERC abuses. Amongst the most essential fixes is an update to FERC's mission. FERC's misplaced focus on advancing, quote, plentiful supplies of natural gas at reasonable prices, end quote, rather than the public interest, encourages FERC to misinterpret and misuse the law to advance decisions that trample on due process, property, and states' rights. FERC's mission must be updated to focus on advancing energy sources that are genuinely in the public interest, including that of future generations, with a priority on advancing clean and renewable energy, and making clear that environmental rights, people's rights, states' rights, and the property rights of the public versus private industry are given priority in FERC decision-making. Amongst FERC's most egregious abuses are the following. Using a strategy called tolling orders, FERC routinely puts project challengers into a legal limbo that prevents them from challenging FERC certifications in court, while at the same time FERC allows the pipeline to advance full steam ahead, exercising eminent domain and construction, including clear-cutting forest land, blasting through bedrock, and trenching through waterways. FERC's January 31st pronouncement that it is going to prioritize landowner rehearing requests and try to meet a 30-day review period does not displace the need for Congress to act. First, FERC has no credibility on the issue. Second, this is just a policy that can be taken away as quickly as it is now seemingly being given. Second, non-landowner challenges will only be considered, quote, only when time permits, end quote. Some of the most important precedent-setting cases were brought by organizations like mine for the benefit of landowners and the community as a whole. But we, when we bring our challenges, we will now still be subject to tolling. And realistically, this means that forests, wetlands, streams, wildlife, and impacted landowners and non-landowning neighbors can all continue to suffer grievous harm while we are forced by FERC into tolling order limbo. FERC continues to refuse to consider the climate changing impacts of pipelines and LNG facilities, including the downstream uses, the upstream production, and during the transmission of the gas. Fracked gas is a dirty fossil fuel. It is a dirty fossil fuel that is having devastating impacts on the health, the lives, the safety and the environments where it is taking place. And it absolutely does impact the way landowners can utilize their lands. It impacts the success of businesses and agriculture, and it impacts the sense of safety and sanctity of people living in their own homes. By ignoring um, the harms of climate change and approving unneeded pipelines, FERC is exacerbating and even locking in our growing climate crisis. And as such, climate change is an essential part of the public interest consideration. FERC falsely claims that it has no way to consider the climate change impacts of the pipelines that it's approving, but this is a ludicrous argument that has been repeatedly debunked. The social cost of carbon is a proven and available tool. FERC routinely undermines states' rights by issuing conditional certifications, followed by quick approval for eminent domain and construction before a pipeline has received state 401 certification or approvals by other agencies. This undermines the ability of states and these other agencies to engage in full, fair, and unfettered review and decision making. Because frankly, it's harder to deny or modify a pipeline that's already half built. As a result, in a growing number of cases, property rights have been taken and irreparable construction damage inflicted for a project that did not secure all needed approvals and may never be built. 
And just in one final note, I'd just like to note that the precedent setting contracts that you heard about earlier that are used as a demonstration of need, all too often, increasingly, routinely, these are contracts made by the pipeline companies with their own subsidiaries and affiliates. So it's an, a, a, a very clear cut case of self dealing in trying to approve need, or trying to prove need. Thank you. Last fall, my office uh, received a letter from your organization, signed by over 100 local environmental groups, calling for hearings into first shortcoming in reducing fossil fuel projects and how um, that is impacting communities across the nation. This really resonates with me uh, because communities in my district are frontline communities, oftentimes black and brown, that are bearing the brunt of the nation's reliance on fossil fuels. Can you please speak to the environmental justice issues from proposed pipeline that your organization and the communities it fights for has encountered? Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Um, absolutely. It's a, it's a very big concern that those with lesser power, those that are minorities, those that are from black and brown communities, from indigenous communities, frequently get targeted, get targeted for highly polluting industrial operations, including pipelines, frack gas infrastructure, and LNG export facilities. Also, low-income low communities get targeted. There needs to absolutely be a reform to the process to take into consideration the very important environmental justice issues. And I would say that many from the coalition that you heard from, called Voices Coalition, uh, that my organization, Delaware Riverkeeper Network, helps lead, they really would like the opportunity to come during an expanded hearing to be able to speak with the members of Congress more directly about the experiences they're having and the solutions that they've identified. Great. Um, your written testimony, testimony also speaks to the need for Congress to reform a first mission to prioritize advancing clean energy and retiring rather than expanding fossil fuel infrastructure. I'm excited by this idea. Can you elaborate on it? Yeah, so um, as I testified earlier, FERC is very, um, uh, very forceful in its assertion that really its primary goal is about advancing frack gas infrastructure, about advancing pipelines and LNG facilities. And in their day-to-day -day practice, they very frequently, why they will allow people to speak about environmental and climate change issues on the record, they actually ignore those ramifications and ignore those harms in reality in their decision-making process, giving priority to the misinformation that the pipeline companies present to them for decision-making. So we believe that the mission of the Natural Gas that's uh, identified in the Natural Gas Act for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission needs to be very, very clear with the commissioners that they do need to prioritize environmental justice. They do need to prioritize the protection of future generations. They do need to ensure that consideration of climate changing impacts and environmental impacts are given high priority. And they do need to prioritize and say that if there is another way to serve the energy needs that, that are being claimed by the pipeline company, for example, clean and renewable energy options, that that too needs to be given priority into the decision making process and that FERC should be entitled to and in fact should be required to reject frack gas pipeline projects when there is a clean and renewable energy option 